Alright guys, so today we're going to show you how to catch, clean, and cook, and the equipment you need to catch lobsters so you can go get them yourself. You just finished diving because it's blowing. Look at this. It's pitch black. We got our limited lobsters right here. We just admire how old this lobster is. He literally has, like, coral growing on it. And, like, algae and particles and stuff. It's crazy, guys. Imagine how old he is. Now my dad is gonna show you the equipment you need to catch Florida lobsters. I'm gonna show you everything that you guys need for you to be able to go out and get these lobsters yourself. It's really not as hard as you think. First things first, gloves. Gloves are essential. I'm gonna show you what you need, but I'm not gonna go into too much detail, brands and all that stuff. Get yourself a good pair of gloves. You can get lobster gloves for cheap couple bucks. You can get those orange ones, they work just fine. Now you're gonna need us. What I use is a snare. These snares that I use are homemade. I make them myself, but all it is is pretty much a stick of aluminum, um, some 1 8 gauge stainless steel wire, a crimp, and some shrink tube. And we'll show you guys how I use this, but this is my preferred way to do it. Everyone's different. Um, you know, you'll see a lot of people that use nets and a tickle stick, and that's fine if that's what you like. Nothing against that. I think it's kind of just what you grew up doing and that's what I grew up doing. I grew up using a snare. There's a couple different kinds. I'll show you this one. This type of snare you can buy at any tackle shop or any dive shop, um, you know, and it works just fine. I don't use this, honestly. I've never used this snare before, but I keep it as a backup. I know some guys that are really good at catching lobsters and they use those and they work just fine. So see what works good for you. You could use the tickle stick in a net, if that works. Next up, fins. You're gonna need some dive fins. You don't necessarily need long free dive fins depending on how deep you're diving. You're gonna need some booties or just dive socks, neoprene dive socks. These are gonna help protect your heels when you're out there kicking a lot. You're gonna need a dive flag, very important. By law, you're gonna need a dive flag and plus just to be safe, you're gonna need a dive flag because there's boats all over the place. If there's one thing that scares me the most when I'm out there diving is boaters, other people on boats. Um, if you're diving from shore, you need to have a dive flag that's at least 12 inches by 12 inches. That's the law. And it needs to have a stiffener, this metal rod that keeps it from folding over when it's out there. If you're on a boat, it needs to be 24 inches by 24 inches. Next up, you're gonna need some way to attach your dive flag to yourself. I use a float line. Um, I usually, if you've seen our videos before, go back and check out some of our other diving videos, spear fishing videos. I attach this float line clip to the front of the kayak and the other end of the float line clip I'll attach to my weight belt. I used to attach it to my gun, but I attach it to my weight belt now. I think it's better just in case something happens to me. God forbid Luke will be able to pull me up and check on me. Another thing you're going to need is a weight belt. You're gonna have to get yourself a weight belt. I recommend you use the rubber weight belt as opposed to the fabric kind because it'll kind of form to your body a little bit better. Um, and I definitely recommend using one with a quick release loop like this. So when you're down there, all you have to do is press that and you're able to drop your weight belt if you need to. That's key. Make sure you leave plenty of tag in that hangs out of there. So you just pull it, it'll drop your weight belt if you need to. Light, dive light essential when you're down there and you're looking in holes princeton tech i can vouch for these lights they're really good they last a long time they're super bright and they have a nice wide beam you're gonna need a light if you're lobster something to put them in get one of these i don't know this thing works just fine for me that you go through them after a while they fade they break but you know i like to get the ones with the zipper on the bottom that way you can pull that zipper dump all your lobsters out but this thing works fine another key Necessity is a lobster gauge. You're gonna need to measure your lobsters while you're out there. You need to measure your lobsters before you put them in the boat. So make sure you know how to use one of these. Get yourself a gauge, have a couple spares in case you lose one. And obviously a mask, I'm not gonna go too much into this, a mask and a snorkel. Do some research on free diving mask, low profile masks. I like the Omer Alien, it's always worked good for me. And that's about it. I always bring my gun with me just in case. Even when I'm just going to catch lobsters, you never know when you'll see a really nice fish. We just got in a few minutes ago. I got all my stuff. I just cleaned it. It's all drying. And we're going to show you some clips from this morning. 
of how all this stuff comes together and how we catch them. See you in the water. All right, welcome back underwater. The point of today's video is to show you guys that anybody can come out here and catch lobsters and bring home some dinner for your family. It's really not as hard as you might think. We left the boat at home on the trailer. Uh, you just drive your truck down here to the beach, find a nice spot and use your equipment that we showed you today. You get in the water and you start kicking. So we've been doing a lot of lobster lately, but we haven't been able to make any videos about it. You know, it was a good mini season. It seems like it's going to be a really good season for lobsters. I'll put up some some pictures here of Luke from mini season. Uh, we were able to get our limit really quickly. Uh, so it looks like it's going to be a promising season for the lobstering. So at this point of the dive, this is what you're going to see. Sand. You're going to see these rows of sand that are made by the waves. First, you're going to go over a sandbar where depending on your location and the tide, it can get really shallow. So once you make your way over that sandbar is when I put my dive flag up and then it's just going to roll and get deeper until you make your way to the reef. And you're going to use these rows of sand kind of like a compass because you know if you're heading directly into these rows of sand like I am now, you know you're heading east out into deeper water away from the beach. So now I'll go ahead, once I get into some deeper water, I'll turn around and I will undo my float line. And that's going to give me some space between me and the kayak. That's a hundred foot float line. So it seems like a lot of line when you're in here in shallow water, but you're going to need it when you get out there into the deep water. So you can see here I'm turned left and now I'm heading parallel to the shoreline. If you're looking at these rows of sand, because I know the spot that I want to dive is north of where I started. So I'm going to cruise in here in this sandy area. And I always keep my head on a swivel when you're in here because I've seen some nice fish. You could see mackerel, cobia, um, mahi, depending on the time of the year, you can have some really cool fish that swim in here. So you're always looking out and keeping your eye on that upper water column. So this is also a really good time to double check and make sure you have everything that you need. You wanna double check your pockets, make sure that you have your lights, your lobster gauges, all that stuff, because the worst thing is when you get out there and you realize you're missing something that you need and you have to go all the way back to get it. This kick out is not nearly as fun when you're doing it for a second time. So I'm heading out now, we're almost to the first reef. And full disclosure guys, I know exactly where I'm going. I know the ledge that I'm going to. Um, I've been diving out here since I was Luke's age and there's hundreds of these spots out here, but I know the spot in mind that I'm going to right now and I know just how to get there. But if it's your first time and you've never done this before and you're looking for your own spots, trust me, it's not that hard. You look around, there's going to be small ledges and cracks everywhere where these lobsters live. And even after diving here for my whole life, I still find new spots all the time so you can... Once you find an area, you can look up, look to the shore, find a range somewhere that you can tell a building or something, and you'll, you'll quickly learn and develop some new spots for yourself. So you can see how the, the sand is changing a little bit here. It starts to get a little bit of a film to it, and it gets a little bit darker. That means we're almost there. And you see that line right there? That is the first reef. And the first reef is kind of just hard bottom. It's not too much structure usually you'll see a few coral heads a few rocks but it's pretty much just hard bottom that's what we call it so once you head past this first reef you'll start getting to sand again just like those rows of sand and then you'll get to the second reef so now i'm just getting here made it to this spot this is the rock i was heading to and we're going to go ahead and take our first peek down here and see what's here. I, I have a feeling that they're going to be here because I was, you know, I've been coming here and every time you come, you, you leave a bunch of lobsters. So they've been pretty good here. I'll go ahead and I'll take the snare off of my wrist. At this point, I'll disconnect my float line from my weight belt and then I'll clip it on the end of my gun. And here's our first lobster came walking out just like that. Now, when you're diving, guys, and you're up on the surface, you can usually see, depending on how deep you are, but you'll be able to see these lobsters' antennas sticking out from under these ledges. 
Sometimes you can. If I don't see them, I'll go down and check them. So now we have our gauge here and give them a check. Make sure that edge of that gauge doesn't fall over the carapace. And that is our first lobster. So when I went down there, you'll see here in a second, you take a look. I know there's going to be a lot of lobsters. We'll be able to get the limit on this rock in one shot. So it won't take very long. Luke is actually not feeling well on this day. He's up there. He's got a, a lot of congestion. So he's not going to be diving. So off, off the southeast coast here of Florida, you're allowed six lobsters per person. So we're only going to get my six lobster limit. Uh, we're not going to get the 12 because Luke's not going to be getting in the water today. There's number two. These are all nice, look like nice, healthy lobsters. There's one or two in there that look short, but there's well over, well over six lobsters in there. So we're going to go ahead and take this guy off. Remember, like I said earlier, guys, you want to measure these lobsters before you put them in the bag. You can't measure them later when they're on the boat. You want to measure them, make sure they're legal before you put them in your bag. So we'll go ahead and get the gauge out. Like I said earlier, guys, I keep that bag, my lobster bag right there on my hip. But once you start to get towards that six lobster limit, that bag gets heavy. So just be aware. It really, it, it slows you down when you're doing these dives and it can actually get pretty dangerous when that bag starts to get heavy. If you're holding your breath, pushing yourself a little bit and you have to kick back up to the surface. So just, just be aware of that guys. So we're going back down here. There's a few more nice lobsters. What do we got? Two so far. So with this snare, you only have to be able to get it just enough to be able to get it through his tail, uh, behind his tail there. So there is number three. Looks like a nice one. And we're only, I'm only doing one, one lobster at a time, depending on how deep it is. Sometimes you can catch one, measure it, put it in the bag and get another one. But this spot is, I believe it's only about 20 or 25 feet or so. There is a lot of, that's another good lobster. There is a lot of shallower spots. Um, you know, if you're not a free diver and you're not experienced doing this, I highly recommend don't come straight out here and try to do this, guys. There's some nice yellow jacks. Here's a nice red grouper, but I'm not worried about that. Just trying to get the, the limit of lobsters here real quick. We got a big cookout tonight and we're going to show you guys a really good recipe. and You'll love it. So stick around to the end. We're going to cook these things up. All right. There's another one. So if you're not a good free diver, guys, if you're not experienced, just do your research. Maybe go out with somebody who does this. I always recommend never dive by yourself. You always want to be careful out here, guys. Safety first. And that is another Let's see. Oh, I think that one slips over him a little bit. So if that gauge slips over that carapace, that thing is not legal. You could push down on it. So I'm going to go ahead and let that one go. All right. So I'm going to make my way over here to the other side of this ledge. This is the same rock. It's kind of like a big oval. So I'm going to make my way to the other corner of it because I saw some nice ones sticking out. So I'm going to use the end of my tickle stick there. It's the snare, but it's just one end is a tickle stick. I flip it around. It's got the snare on the other end. So like I said, just enough to get it around the tail, straight to the hand, just like that. This is a nice lobster here. You can see he's the, the old man in the ledge here. He's got a lot of growth on him. Even when they're I've been doing this a long time, and I can tell you that lobster is plenty legal, but still you want to double check, put that gauge on them, and make sure. So we'll go ahead. You can see the way I like to hold them. You get them by the tail, and you can get them by those, hold them by those knuckles that are up on the top. That's what those antennas connect to, and that's always a good way to hold them because they will not break free. You don't ever want to hold the lobster by their antennas or something because they could break easy and they'll get away from you. So there's another lobster that is number four and like i said earlier guys luke is up there he's in the kayak and he's fishing so let's see what he's doing hi right, guys for a little halfway checkup so guys i'm so sorry i didn't video like almost any of it because it was super hectic i was getting tangles because i really can't even cast i'm on a little bitty kayak but so guys this is the first fish i caught a nice floridian grunt 
And then, guys, the second one, he kind of surprised me because usually we fish and dive and spearfish on like either on the second or third reef in Hollywood, Florida. And we weren't, we were actually diving the first reef. So it was really weird. I got a bunch of cool fish. I'm gonna show them all to you guys. But, and I got another monster grunt. And then this is the one that really surprised me. The Lane Snapper. So guys, that one actually really surprised me because you usually just find them in deeper water. So that one really surprised me, but instead of that, I got a huge porgy. A monster. Guys, and just I admire how beautiful these fish are. Check out these fins. Really pretty fish. And then up there, it's got one more grunt, guys. I that was my latest catch. But I think I'm gonna go get in the water in a couple minutes and maybe I'll shoot a red because my dad said he might have saw a couple. So see you then guys. Woo. All right, back to the lobsters. So at this point, the current is starting to pick up quite a bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'll go down there and I'll wrap this float line around a rock or something down there that'll pretty much anchor the kayak. So then I don't have to worry about holding on to that gun. And you'll see some of these lobsters are just coming out in the open. And that'll happen when you start picking lobsters off of a ledge. A lot of the times they'll get curious and you'll see lobsters walk out sometimes ones that you didn't even know were there. So they're starting to come out a little bit more here. Got one more. I think we have four so far. So we got two more to get. And we're trying to make this quick because I'm seeing some clouds rolling in. And we're going to try to get back to, back to the beach as quick as we can here. So I got one more lobster. Get the gauge on him. And he is a good one and in the bag. So I have make sure double count. I got one more lobster to get here, so I'm going to be a little picky and see if I can't get a nice one here for the last one before we head in. All right, so I'm getting back down here. In my left hand, I have my snare, and in my right hand, I have my light. And you'll see I'm lighting up this ledge here, and I'm looking. I'm trying to be real picky, pick the best one that I want because it's my last lobster of the day. So I'll push a few out. Uh, you'll see there's, this ledge was full of lobsters, so they're all over the place. So I'll go ahead and pick my best one right there, and it's a swing and a miss. So you don't get them every time. You just make sure you take your time, give that a little wiggle. It usually comes out, a little help with the other hand. And there he is. All right, and that will be our sixth lobster. That's our limit of lobsters. Going to head on up, put the gauge on them. Um, you know, and I said you want to take your time. You want to make sure you get your light around your wrist. I got my snare around my wrist. Make sure you're not dropping anything. And we'll go ahead and get the gauge on this guy. Double check him. And he is good. And that's our limit of lobsters. Now we'll go ahead and secure the bag and start making our way in back to the beach. treasure for mom she'll love it here don't break it sand dollar Hi 
guys. So now it's time to go clean these lobsters, and then I'll see you when we're cooking. Woo! So we are going to make lobster, Floridian lobster fried rice. This is a really easy meal for you guys to make if you ever get any lobster. Any lobster will work, but mostly I recommend Florida spiny lobster. So you can do very small pieces. All right, so all we're gonna do now, we got six lobster tails yes, and we're gonna do this. We can do that with the next like 12. So we're just gonna do this with the next six lobster tails. Cut the shell, take the meat out, cut them into small pieces, and we'll see you guys when we're done with that. All right guys, so we just cut up our lobster, put it in a little glass bowl, and very simple guys, show the Old Bay, sprinkle that on there. That should be good. And now, go to little paprika there. It should be good. All right guys, next up is lemon. Nice lemons. Hey guys, this is the fun part. I get to squeeze them. All right guys, so now we're gonna mix. Oh guys, doesn't feel like right touching raw lobster. This doesn't feel the best on your fingers. I'm gonna put some butter in the pan. Oh, come on, man. I'm gonna manhandle this bar. Turn it, get the butter in there to catch the lobster. Here we go, guys. Let's push that around there. Guys, next step, add the lobster. Guys, and when you're cooking this lobster, you gotta make sure that you use this type of spatula with the little slits. So then you leave all the juice in the pan for some of our next ingredients. Because guys, you won't want to miss this. So guys, I'll really stay tuned. Look how golden this stuff is. Guys, this is, guys, this is the good stuff. So the lobster's almost done. So guys, you gotta add some avocado oil. It always helps. Next step, after your lobster is out of your pat, pan, I just watched Peter Pan, guys, and I'm obsessed with it. Next up, when your lobster is out of the pan, put it in a little container there, and that's it. And you do just like a scrambled egg like that. I mean, a scrambled egg, guys. Where am I? Sunny side up egg. And do two of them. We're gonna do more than two. We're gonna do a bunch because we gotta. We're making like a big dinner here for a lot of people, so we're gonna do. We're gonna for put like a bunch of eggs in there. Twelve people. All right, guys, so you'll want to keep all the lobster little bits and pieces in there so it can keep the flavor. And then next, add your eggs like this. All right, guys, so excuse my egg work. I make eggs every morning, but egg work, for some reason, isn't, isn't as good with lobster. First ingredient for our actual stuff for the ingredients. So, not too much guys, nothing big. Avocado oil. A little right. avocado oil. You already used this a little bit today. Oh, yeah guys. We gotta saute oh, the white onion, okay? Saute white onion. Yep, dump them right on in there. Ow! So it came up and, ow! It bit me. Look at that. Yeah, all right. I don't know how many times I've cried today, but it's brutal from these onions. It is crazy. Okay, wait till they get good and soft and a little clear. Guys, yeah, sometimes it helps when you lift it up in different directions. Guys, yeah, you see how it calms down? All the juices soak into the onions. That's why it's coming down. The onions are good and sauteed. Now, it's time to add the rice. Hey, guys, leftover rice at Chinese shops. Work fine, works just as good. We got two of these. One at a time. 
just full on dump a block of it. Guys, look, not a single piece. It's crazy. I told you guys, these leftover pieces work like a charm. Alright. And look how sturdy they are. So the first thing you are going to apply is low sodium soy sauce. So guys, with the soy sauce, we like it just salty. So you guys kill it. It's up to you guys, but you got, I like to just thickly layer it on here, like thick. Alright, that's enough. Very good. I don't forget about my masterpiece here. Now it's a million dollar piece of art. A little bit of sesame oil. This is the stuff that you don't want to go too heavy on because like, it's strong. Bar barely a half a teaspoon. That's good. That's perfect. Guys, that was like a perfect amount. That was maybe a table on um, a teaspoon. Mixy boy, mixy. Next up is hoisin mm -hmm. sauce. Hoisin. Hoisin sauce. Okay, hoisin sauce, that's... Perfect. I just wondered, why is everything about Chinese food and making um, things with rice, together. why is it all black? Why are all the sauces, sauces black? Have you guys ever wondered that? Okay. Guys, next, the dog. Next up, grab some of that always. ponzu sauce. Best sauce. So guys, you could layer this up pretty good. All right, that's good. That's enough ponzu. Perfect. Here we go. Cameraman's doing all the work. <laughs> oh, you see it spin, guys? Dad, please get a glimpse of that. All right, just easy on the, yeah, a little more. We like, oh, that's good. Oh. We're Italian, oh. we're Italian. We like a lot of garlic we are in Italian. our Chinese food. We love Italian, we are Italian. A little ginger. All right, now ginger, not so oh, much. Look at not, not so much gingers. Uh, there we go. That's plenty. All right. Guys, look at his top spin. Beautiful. All right, guys. Next step: add your eggs and your lobster. It's the best thing ever. Oh, oh my gosh. mommy! Oh lord! Guys, my chefing is off the hash today. Fixed our. Difficulties of lobster throwing and now guys make sure like make sure guys you get some of this lobster or if you can all of it to the bottom of the pan but always keep mixing. Alright guys, lobster is in. I just gotta make sure you mix it up like so. Super good. Sometimes I like to shake it. Get them juices out. Next, eggies. Much better than the lobster. Much. Oh, get all them juices. Okay. Perfect, eggies. guys. Perfect yeah. dinner. Quick, easy lobster dinner. Mix all that up real good. Only like seven videos ago, we had, I was thanking you guys for 100 subscribers. Thank you for what you done. Now we are at, what? 7,000.5? Something 7. like 6. that. Something like that. Thank you, guys. At this a moment, lot. a little over 7,000 subscribers. Thank you, guys. All you guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Last item, green peppers. Green onions. Green onions. Boy, all right. Boy, I am not charging well. Guys, but last but not least, peas. Frozen peas and carrots. Toss them in. Frozen peas and carrots. Watch them burn. Frozen peas and carrots. All right. Absolutely not. What do you have that's better than that? I have a whole mechanical mixer. No. <laughs> I have a mechanical mixer. You're not using a mechanical mixer. Time y'all been waiting for? The taste test. So. Got a good piece of everything in there. Mmm. Wow. Guys. It's the best thing I've eaten all year. Well, second time in the year. Because I ate it two days ago. Alright guys. 
See you on our next video. Make sure just like, comment, and subscribe. See you then, guys. Woo!